There's a new leadership in Idaho, not from the top down, but a lot of the top spots. We see new people in those state offices. They will see those. Secretary of State, Attorney General, Superintendent of Public Instruction, Lieutenant Governor are all in their new roles. Well, not yet, but about to be. Lieutenant Governor, that role is pretty interesting. Scott Bedke is going to transition from the longest serving House Speaker to Idaho's number two in command of the state. And he's going from the leader of the House to the leader of the Senate. So does new leadership mean a new direction? Well, given the results of the election and who will end up in the Senate, maybe not as much as you'd think. Joe Paris spoke with Idaho's lieutenant governor elect about Idaho's political landscape, starting with what's happened in the past with the office he's about to inherit. The former tenant bringing a lot of tension to that position that mostly remained in the background. So does Scott Bedke expect a clean slate from Idahoans? Well, I think I'll get a clean slate eventually. Obviously, uh, we'll go in with a deficit because some of the activities, some of the actions of my predecessor, but we're not going to let that stop us. I mean, I'll, I, uh, I'm going to be out and about, and, uh, and we'll have a, a great staff in that office that will be able to interface with the public and to do the scheduling and all of the, all the research behind the, uh, the issues, I don't think that uh, we'll miss a beat. We'll, we'll see what the legislature does. It's all on them. I mean, uh, they can fix it or they can let it ride. Whatever they choose is, works. Where do you think Idaho is headed right now? We saw in the general election, Aaron Bundy get 100,000 votes. And there's 100,000 Idahoans out there that did not vote for Brad Little, but we understand they're probably leaning more mm -hmm. conservative. You know, with that said, 17% of all voters saying that you know, Brad Little's not our guy, how do you consider that heading into the lieutenant governor's role and working with the governor saying there are some people that didn't vote for us, but we want to work for them too? Well, we've always got to be doing what we think is, is right. The large, by far, the, the largest percent of Idahoans supported Governor Little, Little as they supported me and the other winners. I think that we take that as a as a as clear direction. I think I don't think there's any percentage or any good to be had by looking over your shoulder. We're just going to go do what we think is right. After we collect data consensus, we're going to be plugged in to our state, and uh, and from that. Uh, from that input, we will go forward. What are your thoughts on moving on from the Idaho House? You're the House Speaker, the longest running one in state history. Now you'll, you know, you'll preside over the Senate. And there's always been the commentary that the House gets a little more wilder than the Senate. But heading into this session, I guess, what are your thoughts on the House and Senate and your new role? Well, I look forward to getting to know uh, a new group of people. Uh, the House was the House. And, and, uh, and I was you know, privileged to, to enjoy their confidence for the last five cycles. And they elected me uh, you know, as their speaker. There's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. Uh, the people elected me to be the presiding office of the, of the Senate. So that's a little different. There's a little different culture there. But I don't, I don't foresee any problems in the transition. Uh, I, I look forward to I, learning a new process. And uh, I look forward to all the new friends that I'll have there. I know that the lieutenant governor's position is kind of, it's whatever the lieutenant governor wants to make it. You can do as little or as much as you want. One thing we have seen in the past, those lieutenant governors had like a passion project. <clears throat> governor Little, he was really big on education. We saw that carry over into his work as governor. Do you have one area or one or two areas that will be your passion project as lieutenant governor? Can I have two? You can have two. All right. I, I am passionate about our natural resources here in the state of Idaho and the proper use of them, particularly our water resource. We live in the arid west, and uh, just because we're growing doesn't mean we're going to get more water. And so it's going to be incumbent upon us to conserve what we have, to make it go as far as we can, and to prepare. You know, they say to prepare for a rainy day. We need to prepare for a drought. Second, and arguably every bit as important, is that I want to create an, uh, or help create an atmosphere, a situation in Idaho where Idaho kids can always get an Idaho job. And so that's, a, that's, that's two circles working together. So you have to have a positive business climate, but you cannot have a positive business climate without having a quality education uh, available to every kid. If there's one thing that I heard on the campaign trail, and it didn't matter whether they're Democrats or Republicans or everybody in between, uh, parents and grandparents want their kids to have access to a quality education. And that spans all political, uh, the whole political spectrum. So this, this, this ability to connect kids earlier in their high school uh, experience to 
the labor market that is just begging for people. You know, we need to facilitate that. We need to invest in these in-demand careers that we've talked about during this special session. So those are the two things uh, that I can bring special passion to, uh, but I'm pretty good at a, a, at a longer list as well. And I asked a lieutenant governor-elect about who he thinks should replace him as the House Speaker, and he didn't have someone to endorse, and he touched on, on really how competitive that whole thing can be behind the scenes. So long story short, Brian, we will find out soon. But, you know, I was trying to find out if Mr. Bedke had somebody who would say, you know, this guy would be a good guy to replace me. But, you know, kind of the way it works is a little more behind the scenes. It's yeah. a caucus election, and it, it's a big deal. Whoever replaces Scott Bedke, it's going to be the first person to be the House Speaker in a long time here in Idaho. How will they run the show? How will that impact what happens on the the floor time will tell did you ask him if he plans to pass any executive or sign any executive orders while governor little might be out of town at some point you know i didn't ask him specifically okay. about that but i got it what you're getting at here and long story short you know bedke tells me he's excited to be a team with uh, with governor little and a part of the interview that you know didn't make our show today is uh, he tells me that he and governor little went to lewiston together as a team and he found you know, Bedke telling me this, he found that people liked the team and he liked seeing, you know, the governor, lieutenant governor working together on topics. Mm -hmm. So it definitely will be a different approach. I mean, we've talked on this show for several years now about the relationship between McGeehan and Little. I can just tell you the relationship between Bedke and Little is going to be significantly different. Much different. Opposite side of the spectrum. All right. Thank you very much, Joe. We'll be right back.